Welcome back to Freightline TV and today we have a 2012 C63 AMG. Every time I wake up, I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden, I don't look at anything the same way Got a build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never... That's what to normally start These are 18 inch wheels Four pot calipers on the back And six pot on the front, I'll show you them in a sec you know, you've got to have big stopping power for a car like this. There's no point in putting two litre diesel brakes on it because it ain't going to stop. I was saying to the owner, the only thing I, that I wish they did with these is these front arches. Now, the front arches, it makes it look like proper aggressive and it's such a good look. But then they, I just think, why don't you just do it on the back? But they do it on the black edition, uh, which try and find a black edition is hard, but... I just think it's standard. I think it looks so much better with wider arches, but it's probably, for me, one of the best looking Mercedes there is. It's just an un un unbelievably good looking car. So let's talk about these engines. These are all hand built. I can't tell you who built it. We can't see, but Dennis, you built a good engine here, mate. So an interesting fact for you. Fat? Fact for you. These are 457 a standard, power-wise. I've been told that the throttle bodies are only at 90%. So in a 507 edition, one of these, they are at 100% with a slight tune. So it's basically, when when if you want more power out of it, have the throttle body uh, adjusted to 100% and then with a map, and then that goes from 457 to sort of 507, 510 horsepower, which from a uh, naturally aspirated engine is like, that's a crazy amount of power um, increase. And obviously also with these, you, uh, you can supercharge them as well. But for me, you don't need, uh, there are a lot of powers that are standard, but it's an interesting fact for you, anyone C63 owners that didn't know, but there you go. So this car is pretty much as standard as it's you know, not far if you're going to get. The only thing that has been done is sort of these, black tr uh, plastic trims above the number plate all been gloss blacked it's had a secondary dig uh, cats removed it sounds incredible literally that's another thing i love about these mercs just the, the exhaust little touches like that you know, it's such a lovely such a nice little car big it's not even a little car it's a big car sorry but as you can see that arch big difference from the front the only only bugbear i would say with that but how nice does that look? So, interior wise, nice steering wheel. They've got flappy paddles, yeah, flappy paddles on there. Nice and, I wouldn't say it's basic, it's just uh, just a Mercedes. Any any Mercedes interior is really nice. This one's got the pan roof as well, which is a lovely extra. And this, that like I've seen with the seat, is really good. I'll quickly show you what, what we'll do here. So if you want anyone getting the back after you're pissed up with your mates, Go on, mate, in you go. Fold the seat back, fold itself, and then once the back in the back, back down. Nice little touch, you know, that's what you get when you buy, you know, probably get another car as well, that's what you get when you buy a Mercedes, you know. But interior wise, really nice place to be. I've sat in seats and they're so comfortable. It's, uh, it's just what you expect from a Mercedes. What's the pros and cons about the car? What is it there? Obviously, like I say, as a, as a kid it was my dream car and then I'm sure a lot of people it was, uh, well not as a kid, more of a, a young adult when these when did these first come out, sort of? 2000 and... 
Eight, around that, that yeah. Out, didn't they, I think. So, you know, back when I was younger, it was one of my, one of my, yeah, one of my dream cars and that. So, what, obviously you had an M5 before this, what made you go to one of these then? Well, I'd say I would have kept the M5, but both from SMG gearboxes, so they're about as reliable, well, they're not, so just yeah. put it that way. So then I started looking at other things, and after having them and realising how much it was going to cost for both of them gearboxes to be fixed, to have a look at a more reliable car and that's when this obviously sprung into mind then you do your research you find out which ones are the better ones because even though it's the same as the preface lifted effectively yeah keep going keep going keep going, keep going. Yeah, it's right. the next one. but yeah even though it's the same as the preface lift effectively you know, the engine's still the same and all that different components so yeah like i said to the other night it's not this one is it no yeah they keep, keep going like i said the car yeah, yeah. done reviews on STs and stuff and, and then sort of cars don't like don't buy a car like that if you can't afford to repair it or like cars like this and then you can't you can't compare this to an ST this is a different league but it's the same aspects you keep going, it's the same aspect as in you've got to look after a car like this like you have to keep it serviced you have to service it regularly you have to you have to keep on top of all this stuff do you know what I mean no, just go to the next one mate. Well, it's like this has got service coming up in just over a month and it's over a thousand pound yeah. just for service so but it's it's a lot of money and that's right here, mate. Yeah. it's a lot of money but it's some when you have a cartridge you have to look after don't you because yeah, otherwise course, yeah. it'll just cost you more like for, yeah. for, for a service it'll cost you a damn sum more than that the thing is a lot of people don't realize like you get certain cars where say you take your st for example you can hammer the life out of that, you know, the engine line is crack and obviously things like, well, yeah, the line is crack and whatnot, it's not very good, but yeah. the engine oil temperature will only sit at about 105, 110, mm. whereas the engine oil temperature on this, when you start giving it hell for leather, yeah. goes up to 120, 130, Jesus. I mean, I've not seen 130, which one? I see, I see a lot of people... Um, I've seen a lot of videos on the C63 and then a lot of people are saying about the gearbox and them. Now there is a, is it 2012? And then later on, like, there's a difference isn't there? Is it a different gearbox or something? Yeah, or? so basically 2000, and from when they started the production of them to 2000 and I think it was early 2012, they had torque converter gearboxes in, still seven speed box, but it was torque converter. So obviously you'd lose a bit of power out there anyway. They're always better for pulling off because you haven't got to wait for clutches to engage or anything. But then from 2012, somewhere there, upwards to when, I think 2014 was when they stopped mm -hmm. making these, started making the 205. Yeah. So when it got to there, they turned them into MCT gearboxes, which I'm pretty sure are wet clutch, but that's multi-clutch transmission, mm -hmm. I think it stands for which basically means you get more power through the gearbox, the ratios are better and so on and so forth. And they've obviously with that integrated race start mode, which is launch control mm -hmm. for people who are not familiar. <laughs> and they put an extra gearing mode in it. It's just, a, you've got comfort, sport, sport plus manual, and then RS, which is race start. But on the older ones, you just had comfort, sport and manual, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you ask anyone that owns one of these with these gearboxes, you never ever really see them driving around in sport. It's a bit of a pointless mode, but you got comfort if you're just chilling, you don't really yeah, want to yeah. use all your fuel. And then Sport Plus, basically what it is, it changes the gear ratio. So when, you, when you're putting your foot down in comfort, I can't remember the exact specs, but it, it will change a lot, let's say 6,000 revs into the next gear. And then if you put in Sport, it changed to like 6.2. And then if you put in Sport Plus or Manual, or well Manual obviously that's self-explanatory, you change it whenever you like, but mm. if you put it into Sport Plus, that's usually the best performance gear shifts the car can do with yeah. the gearbox. Yeah. So that's when obviously this gearbox comes in better. That's that's when you buy when you buy a car like this, that's when things start getting really technical and get so like everything's so well built in it. But let's talk about one thing with this car that I wanna know about. How much does it cost to run, as in fuel and like because let's be honest, it ain't a two litre turbo, you know, 6.3 litre V8. What power was four, was it 457? 
457 standard on this model, yeah. Yeah. So what about fuel then? What are you get into a tank? I actually had a good run yesterday, so if I told you my actual now, it's probably going to be quite friendly. But I was doing literally sitting cruising at 70 mile an hour yesterday, and I've done like a 10 mile journey since then around town. And I'm currently at 24.8, which is something that I've never seen in that this. Ain't, so that far. ain't too bad. No, Consider it. What, what's the worst? I've had six. Six on miles to the gallon. Yeah, but I mean, if I reset it and started hammering it, it'd probably be lower. Yeah. So, but cruising around town, generally 13, 14, you know, 16, depending. It's all start stop traffic, so obviously that's where your fuel gets burnt out. Yeah. And then obviously, if you just put your foot down it, you can just kiss goodbye. You can literally watch the fuel gauge go down. But Jesus. it's not one of them cars you buy to worry about the fuel. No, no, no. You know what I mean? So. What about tax? Tax is 580 quid a year. Yeah. which is the top tax band and obviously if you wanted to pay that direct debit it's over 600 quid so that's not cheap um like insurance because you are how old you're 26 26 yeah yeah 26 how much is it for you to insure this for the year well, insurance for me for the year i mean i've got points on my license at the minute but they're gonna go soon but for me to insure this at the moment is i think it's about 800 pound a year that's not bad that's not bad really for what it is is it was your m5 more than that M5 was a little bit more than this. That was no, the M5 was less. That was about 740 pound for the year. So that wasn't too bad either. Yeah. But obviously, but for those who don't know, E60 M5, the one with the V10 engine. But what? Yeah. And if you ever, uh, if you're into cars and that, like, I wish I could have done a video on that car, but it had problems when you had it, weren't it? Yeah. But they're two different kind of noises. This is more of a this is your thunder noise, isn't it? This is your deep, proper V8. That that the F, the F, sorry, the V10 for me. But do you know what it reminds me of? A little bit of a Formula One car. You know that high pitch sort of like when you're really on it. That's what it sounded like to me. That the M5. Yeah, they're, they're, they're totally really... different noises, but both unbelievable cars. So th this sort of car of its generation, it's, it's competitors as round then. So you're looking. What are you looking at? You're looking yeah, you're at looking RS4. The, the E60 M5. Yeah. That was arguably this car's main competitor. That was a competitor to the E63 as well, though, wasn't it, at the time? Sort of same yeah. sort of size, wasn't it? Yeah, and then yeah. you had like, so you had the C63, the RS4, uh, what else you had? BMW M3, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, um, you could say the M3. Yeah. Right, let's, let's give it here then. expected whereas this is just like I can't begin to say what it's like it's 
every little boy, every little boy, every teenager's boy's dream to have a car like this, and it truly is just such an incredible car. So watching this video on this C63, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any comments, any questions, please leave a comment below. If you've got time to like and subscribe, even better. Thank you all for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.